Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. These words shall be in thine heart. Teach them diligently unto thy children. Talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way. Bind them for a sign upon thine hand. They shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Write them upon the posts of thy house. This is Families of Faith. Hello and welcome to another episode of Families of Faith. My name is Tim Rumsey and my wife Stacy is with me. We've got some fun things to look at today, don't we? We think so. We hope so. <laughs> if they're not fun, let us know. Go to our website at pathwaytoparadise.org. Fill out the contact form. We'd love to hear from you. Even if you didn't think this episode was fun and if it triggers your thoughts or suggestions and if you did think it was fun, we'd love to hear from you as well. So we're looking today at family tips and tricks. Yes, we are. What's that mean? Well, just a little bit of random thoughts from our family to yours. <laughs> what things are working well, things that we've discovered along life's journey that we think might be helpful to you. We all discover things in day-to-day -day life that uh, don't work so well sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then things that, well, that seemed to go pretty well. Maybe I can improve on that next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's our goal. <laughs> <laughs> present helpful tips today. And all of these are designed, or, or the reason we're sharing them is not just, you know, random trivia here, but um, a well-ordered family that operates well doesn't happen by chance or accident. No. And uh, even the details uh, of our lives that may seem separated, right, from the, the spiritual aspects, we often talk about spiritual things on this show here, even the, the so-called mundane things have a pretty powerful impact on the other parts of our lives, mm -hmm. don't they? Sure do. I'm thinking of a quote about well-ordered families. I wish I had it here right now, but I don't. <laughs> but it's pretty powerful. It's what? one of the most powerful arguments in favor of the gospel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, we can speak for ourselves. We have discovered and we continue to discover that a family of faith is not something that happens um, by accident. No. Certainly not by default, right? No, for sure. Takes, uh, takes um, conscious effort and some deliberate actions and decisions. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at a few of those that might help. They yes. might not. We'll see. <laughs> Let us know. Again, go to pathwaytoparadise.org. Let us know if this is helpful or not. Well, let's start with a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, as we look at... Um, different aspects of our lives and our families and how we function. Uh, we know you care about everything. And so we pray that you'd help us to share what we've learned, both from the positive and negative experiences, and uh, to share something that will be of help to others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Stacy, you wanted me to start today by sharing <laughs> something you're going through right now. Yes. That uh, actually a lot of people, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that are dealing with this, and that's tick-borne illness, illnesses. That's right. And um, we're sharing it in hopes that we can prevent you from getting it. Because um, ticks are on the rise in many states across the U.S. and some states that you wouldn't think they would be in. Um, like colder climate states like Maine, the state of Maine. It has Where your aunt lives. Yes, a very high, I think it's one of the highest there. And uh, here in Missouri, where we live, we also have our fair share. <laughs> and so um, it's kind of interesting because just a month ago, my mom wound up with it. And I had pulled a tick off her back a few weeks before that. And she wound up with flu-like symptoms, body aches, chills, fever. Sore throat. Even sore throat. Yeah, that's not necessarily one on the list, but mm-hmm. Uh, muscle aches, all of that, tiredness. And we unfortunately didn't get on top of it for her until she had had a fever for a week because we just thought it was a flu. Um, but a week goes by and still has a flu. And, um, still a fever. She was running I a mean, fever. I mean, flu, not, not a flu. Yes, thank you, fever. And so we said, we better take her in. And um, turns out it's ehrlichiosis 
which is a never heard of it <laughs> tick-borne illness and um so at that was it at that time or right after you pulled a tick off the back of my neck yeah i mean it's been a few weeks ago now okay anyways so shortly after my mom just gets through that process well to be exact as we're recording this yesterday <laughs> I wound up with all of the same symptoms. Felt pretty rotten yesterday. You were on the couch most of yesterday. Yes, with all those symptoms I just mentioned. And um, and I had remembered you had pulled a good-sized tick off the back of my neck a few weeks before. And so fortunately, we were, we were able to get help right away. Um, so I'm taking the medicine, doxycycline. If there's a natural remedy, we'd love to hear from Let you. Let us know, please. <laughs> because I I don't know of it. Um, it's something that you should get on pretty quick because it can become serious if, it's, if not treated. Yeah. So anyways, that's what we've learned. Is <laughs> and I think, you know, these tick-borne illnesses uh, certainly are a bigger threat to those of us that live in the country. Um, but they, they can show up anywhere. And... Um, Keeping your lawn mowed mm -hmm. low really mm -hmm. helps. Yes. And then if you do go in the woods or wherever they might be, uh, just check yourself very carefully. Yeah, or even if you don't think you are in an area that they might be, it just might be a good idea to check every day because from our little research, um, if you catch them, even if they have attached within a certain period of time, it won't transmit. And so... The earlier the better to get these awful ticks off. <laughs> Even if you don't go, you know, in the woods or wherever these ticks are, if you have a pet, maybe a dog that likes to run around, mm -hmm. they can bring them back very, very easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we would hope that this can help you not experience any tick-borne illnesses because they're really no fun. It's uh, certainly part of the curse. Mm -hmm. But there, we also have another friend that is experiencing long-term effects from Lyme's disease, which also comes from ticks, and um, it's just better to avoid. <laughs> so we're, we're telling you this so that hopefully you won't get this in your home. That's right. Well, as long as we're talking about health, um, we were thinking of a few yes. other... These are simple things, right? We can all do them. Yes. But even our kids... Uh, have started to pick up on some of these things now, and it, it's kind of fun to watch them actually come out and say, hey, I, I did my hot and cold shower, right, because I wasn't feeling good, mm -hmm. um, or mm -hmm. asking us to, well, we'll get to the other thing that we do sometimes yes, here. Yes. Let's start with the hot and cold shower. Yeah, well, um, contrast showers are really powerful and uh, effective in not only staying healthy, but if you're starting to feel sick, getting over sickness. So um, mainly that looks like just at the end of your shower, switching from hot to cold, about two minutes hot to 30 seconds cold, and going back and forth several times. I'm glad it's longer hot. Yes, <laughs> me, me too. I'm glad more than you. <laughs> I have a hard time with that cold. But it is good to end with the cold. Yes. As much as you might like to finish off with that nice warm water. Ending with the cold water is pretty important. It closes your pores, so it keeps you from getting more harmful things in your skin that way. And uh, when you get out of the shower after cold, you actually feel pretty warm. pretty warm. Yeah. If you end with the warm you, and you step out, oftentimes cold. you feel cold. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So those are really important, and yeah. we found. We shouldn't uh, fail to explain briefly why the hot and cold is so effective and important because it gets the uh, blood circulating in your body and yes exactly the life and the health is in the blood the bible yes. is very clear about that yeah and so uh, if your blood is not flowing sluggish <laughs> if it's sluggish mm -hmm. uh, your whole system is going to suffer yes. if your blood is flowing and it's pumping it washes out the nutrients or the, oh, the, the waste, the waste. And, yeah. and the toxins. It brings in nutrients. Uh, it's just so powerful for your overall health. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. Yeah, it acts like a pump that you can uh, create in your body to move the blood, which, is, like you said, the life is in the blood. And there's, you know, sometime we should do a whole episode on uh, hydrotherapy. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's a lot of things you can do very simply at home. Mm -hmm. But one of the simplest is just hop in the shower and turn it back and forth to hot and cold. Yes, 
Very good. Yeah. So we've found those to be helpful. And also along with water, um, consider having a water station in your house. And one, I mean, a while back, a friend had mentioned this idea to us. And so we got a special glass container that we put water in. And when I'm on the ball, which is not all the time, sometimes I'll slice up lemons in there or limes or cucumbers and um, put it in there. And it just is inviting for the kids to drink. And, and sometimes when our container goes empty or low, my kids are telling me, please fill it up. We need our water container filled up. So It can be very tasty too, mm-hmm. especially if you drop berries in or something like mm-hmm. that. And it's just um, so good to drink water. So important. Most of us don't get nearly enough water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we didn't plan the theme of water, but... It demonstrates how important water is. And we know we're majority water, right? What is Mm -hmm. it, 70% water in our bodies. But we need it inside. Uh, It's helpful on the outside as well, like we were just talking about. Yes, for sure. So now along with the health, you you are not sure about sharing this one. (laughs) Well, and this is another simple, very simple remedy. Uh, And it works best with younger kids, as you'll see in just a second here. But... You know, if they're having an upset stomach or they're feeling constipated, Mm -hmm. one of the simplest and best ways that you can uh, help them with that is to simply turn them upside down and grab them by the ankles and hang them off the floor for a few seconds. Yes. If if there's no one with you to help you do this, you can try to do a headstand or somehow to accomplish this goal of putting your head below your stomach. And if I, I tried that, I'd hurt myself and I'd have bigger <laughs> problems than I started with. Yeah, don't hurt yourself <laughs> over this. But a friend of mine shared this many years ago, and I thought it sounded crazy. But I have since used it many times, and it's been helpful. So yeah. Now, another thing so, that can help the, uh, the constipation um, is just gently rubbing the stomach in a circular direction, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially going clockwise is it yes okay (laughs) that's what i meant i meant to say clockwise okay which is circular i wasn't wrong okay and also with that i think the idea with all of that is just movement for the colon so also just moving after eating go for a walk or something one of the worst things we can do is eat a big meal and then just sit. sit that's right yeah Okay, so as long as we're still on kind of this health, uh, we just mentioned some food here. Something we have found, well, let me back up a second. We've got a a good-sized family, four kids, so there's six of us in the house. We like to buy bulk foods. You know, it's a little bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. But what have we found in those bulk food sacks sometimes? Well, bugs. (laughs) Plenty of bugs. And they can really infest over time in sitting in our buckets waiting that's no fun. That makes you it's want a good to throw, way to go throw, on a diet, right? You throw lose the your whole batch out. Yeah. So another friend of ours shared with us: just put the bag in the freezer as soon as you get it. And um, I These thought these big chest freezers works best. Yeah. I thought, are we just freezing the bugs and they're still in there? I don't know, but you don't see them crawling around near as much, so it's working for us. We've kind of made it a habit now. Yes. If we bring something back that's a bulk item. Put it in the freezer. Put it in the freezer for a few days, and then you're ready to use it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. We're going to change gears a little bit here. Okay. We had, oh, kind of a stressful situation recently that we were trying to figure out, not between us. I'm trying to remember which one. With our family. (laughs) And um, we were trying to figure out the best way to approach it and, and communicate through this. And your uncle gave us some really good advice. Oh, yes. As you were talking with him about it. Yes, yes, yes. This is biblical, by the way. Um, It's ask questions rather than tell. So, um, for example, well, first of all, in just the New Testament alone, there's over 100 times where Jesus asks questions. Also, um, in the Old Testament, you have, let's think of the story of, Adam and Eve, you know, they sinned and, you know, Jesus was coming to walk with them. And he said, where are you? Did he really not know where they were? Um, They hid themselves, you know. Of course, every time he asks a question in the entire Bible, he knows where they are. So why ask questions? 
Well, when you're when I'm telling you something or you're telling me something, especially if there's mm, a bit of tension in the situation, it usually or often comes across as um, <clears throat> aggressive, and questions can help defuse that a little bit if they're asked with the right tone of voice and in the right way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it's it's less aggressive. Well, often it can clear up something too without ever having to say you did this or you know maybe they didn't maybe you misunderstood and so by asking questions it can clear up a lot of things before you even get into a, a an argument or a disagreement or a struggle so questions are a good way to clarify they're a good way to uh, defuse a situation mm -hmm. they also you know if someone asks a good question it causes you to think mm -hmm. and so questions um are good from that standpoint as well. You know, if you're trying to get a point across to your children, maybe, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. rather than standing there with, you know, shaking your finger or your fist at them, ask them some questions mm -hmm. and um, they can start thinking about the situation. And a good question can also be a leading question at times too, but mm -hmm. um, it's not easy for all of us. I don't think necessarily we're wired that way usually, but good communicators do that. I mean, you mentioned Jesus. And, mm. and, and in the Old Testament, you mentioned some of those stories where how does God respond to sin? Well, clearly he knows what happened. He's not trying to get the information out, but he is, is trying to open up a dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. That was really mm -hmm. the point there in the Garden of Eden. He does the same thing with um, Cain after Cain has killed his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. clearly knows what's happened. He watched the whole thing. Um, but he asks Cain, you know, where is your brother? Mm -hmm. He's trying to open up that communication, ultimately in that case, to get Cain to repent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes. we took that advice from your uncle and uh, I think we tried to use it in the conversation mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. followed mm -hmm. with the other party and um, it went well. Yes, yeah, in, I noticed in Job chapter 38 through like chapter 41, so like a solid four chapters, it's asking questions, God, to, to Job. To Job. Mm -hmm. And that's so interesting. But all of those, um, it causes us to think um, rather than to knee-jerk response, you know. And so even between a husband and wife, I think it's super helpful and um I hope we we are doing that and practicing that. <laughs> but it, if we're not, we should be, shouldn't we? It's... Yeah, and just remember, I mean, you can ask a question in a very aggressive way too. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. That's obviously not the goal here, but... That's right. Um, a good question that's thought out um, can go a long ways toward setting a conversation in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, we're going to switch gears again. Okay. Right, again, these are tips and tricks. Right. So, uh, What's this our... is an assortment. It's a grab bag. Of <laughs> so good or bad advice, you uh, be the, the decision maker there. We hope it's good. This is random. Yes. Okay, so one of the biggest stressors probably for any family and most marriages, at least from time to time, mm. is finances. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, figuring out how you're going to deal with money, how you're going to spend it, how you're going to save it. Um, it can be very, very challenging. Who's going to manage it mostly? But both, I mean, both have to manage it. <laughs> How do you get on the same page with it? You know, mm -hmm. So in our experience, uh, I think we've been on the same page for many years as far as what our goals are mm -hmm. and, and how we want to go about money management. But actually putting that into practice mm -hmm. and doing it. It's been more challenging. Effectively, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. a challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, we have found... Uh, that we have done best recently mm -hmm. by using uh, an app on our phones, mm -hmm. a budgeting app. Yes. And there's many of them out there. So yes. we're not endorsing any specific app, although we'll share the one that we are, we're using, but we're not sponsors, we're not affiliated or anything no. like this. No, uh, but it's every dollar, which is from uh, Ramsey. Ramsey. Dave Ramsey. Yeah, we're probably related. <laughs> Somewhere back there, he misspelled his name generations back. <laughs> so we probably we probably did. Didn't close the A or something. But, you know, it, it's very simple to use. You can mm -hmm. even tie in your bank accounts with it. So a lot of your transactions show up automatically. But the genius of it for us 
was yes. that we both have the app on our phone. Mm. And when you make a purchase, or if I make a purchase, as long as we're diligent to take the 30 seconds to put that into the app, mm -hmm. the other one can see in real time where we're at. And yes. that was, for us, that was often the big struggle, um, <clears throat> knowing where we were at throughout the month. Yeah, just practically. I'm going to the store, the grocery shop. Where are we? How much do I have to spend, et cetera? Um, and now I know if we're both entering our receipts, which we've pack, made a pack together that we will do, <laughs> then it's real time and we can know exactly where we're, we're at. Yeah. And I think it's made a difference. I do. It's, it's helping. It's very helpful. You know, it's um, amazing and scary how much money we can easily lose track of and waste and waste in the yes. course of a few weeks mm -hmm. not that you're trying to even if you're trying to be careful if uh, there's not something that's simple and clear that mm -hmm. lets you know right where you're at a few dollars here and a few dollars there uh, quickly adds up mm -hmm. so true this has been a very a game changer for us that's right mm -hmm. okay how about family evaluations yeah so <laughs> As we came up with this one, I, I think it may be something we need to do more than uh, saying to you, this is a tip and trick you should try. I think this is one that we would like to try more. Um, but that is just asking our kids um, from time to time, whether, whether it's like a weekly family meeting or a monthly family meeting or whatever, that you, you ask what's going well, um, what's not what should be changed and how. Um, and as far as how the family is operating and how the family is structured. And so this could be different ways, you know, family worships, mealtime, chores. If you're homeschooling, you know, the homeschooling part of your family. Um, schedule. Schedule, yes. Um, all of that. And let them weigh in on it. Really is... I mean, it sounds like a good opportunity for kids to have a voice. Yes. And, and to be heard. So we're going to try this, we're aren't we, try honey? It. That's right. We're going to be in the car all day tomorrow. Maybe we could try it then. Yeah. We, we need to check in the, with them more because they will have a really good feel for what's going well and what's not. And um, we might as well ask them and get their ideas. I know what they're going to say. You do? Yeah. What? More waffles and pancakes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be things that make us cringe. Like, oh, it was sorry, simple, we haven't. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So maybe we'll come back on a later episode and uh, let you know how that went. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Let's do that. But <clears throat> communication, we all know it's important. Doing it effectively is the challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, kids especially need to know that they, they have input. Mm -hmm. They have a voice in how the family's operating. Yeah, they're not running the family, right. but they um, they can have a voice and we can take their ideas. They have good ideas. They need to know that uh, we as parents care mm -hmm. about how they feel. What they think, yeah. <clears throat> and that we're open to improvements. <laughs> so we know we, we have need of that. Always room for improvement. Well, I think we have time for one more uh, topic here. And that is... Um, in general, we'll start with the general application, um, just how a day operates and runs is often determined by what happened the night before. Mm. And it's interesting because in the Bible, uh, the bibli biblically, a day begins at sunset mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the 24 hours from sunset to sunset. That's not how we think in our modern culture here. We think midnight to midnight. So where do you get that biblically? Oh, you can see it in several places. Um, Genesis chapter 1. Mm -hmm. In creation week, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Mm -hmm. And all through creation week, you see that pattern. The evening and the morning were the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Mm -hmm. Here's a simple verse to share with that. Um, Psalm fifty-five, seventeen: Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. That's right. Mm -hmm. So application, right? If your family is staying up so late that you can't get up in the morning, um, then what you're doing the night before obviously is impacting how your day is going to go. Mm -hmm. And a day 
is uh, really set in motion by those early hours in the morning. Not saying you got you have to get up at four a.m. But or little, or those early evening hours. The, uh, yes, the <laughs> earliest evening hours. So, just keep this in mind, right? Um, what we do, how we end the day before, when we go to bed, how we go to bed, right? What we're thinking about as we tuck into bed at night mm -hmm. is really going to impact the next day. Mm -hmm. And so, specifically, we were thinking of preparing for um, church and how that starts the night before. For us, we're Seventh-day Adventists and we go to church on Saturday. So for us, it starts on Friday, preparing. And so what are some of the things that we have done to prepare ahead of time well, for we church? encourage our kids to um, get their nice clothes out, get them lined up so they're ready to go. And uh, they found their shoes because they could be anywhere, right? It's been seven days since they used them. Um, well, they're supposed to be in their closet in this place. But <laughs> yes, get their shoes and clothes out, fill up their water bottles, put them in the car. If they need their instrument, they can put that by the door. Um, what else? I had a special chart for that. I'm trying to remember what else is They've on it. They've kind of outgrown that chart, which is a good thing. And it's, it yeah. demonstrates that these habits uh, can be built and learned and they kind of started the doing it on their own so we just quit using the chart in fact they're really on me like mom we need to be on time I'd like to go early I'm not just on time they want to be early by all ways we have some church so, members that uh, <laughs> challenge them right I'll be here before you are so they like to get there early and they want to help and so they're, they're helpful to me about preparing early enough to be ready. Yeah. And uh, as far as we adults are concerned, making sure we're prepared. So I'm often speaking or giving, you know, the Bible study lesson, making sure I'm prepared, not just the night before, but earlier in the week. Yes. Very important. And the and same holds true with food preparation. Yes, absolutely. And just all through the week, I'm preparing to be ready for that special day where all the laundry's done and all of that can't happen just the day before. That's right. We ran out of time. Yes. Right? We'll have to do this again. Uh, we, well, we hope it's been helpful. Share your so. family tips and tricks with us and uh, maybe we'll share it with everybody else here on a future episode of Family Tips and Tricks. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. Hope that you've been blessed by the time spent together. We sure have. And uh, keep building your family of faith every single day. Families of Faith is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. Find us online at www.pathwaytoparadise.org.